Right now, I'm taking a little break, break from grinding these. You started as bars of steel into these, which will eventually become these. But I have a whole stack of them left to do, and I kind of am going to break to break up the monotony here. So I thought I'd make you a little video about lessons learned from lawnmower blade meringues. So this was the first knife I ever made. Made it out of a lawnmower, and there's a video of how to do that and everything. And it's been a fantastic performer. Um, and I've made tons and tons and tons of these since then. Um, and I've kind of kept an eye on harangues as I go different places in the world and see different things. This is one um, that I bought from Smoky Mountain Knife Works when I was down there. and. Uh, supposedly from World War II, but the thing that's different about this is this little notch here. I hadn't seen that uh, on any other parangs, and so I decided to kind of look into that and uh, try to see if I could make that work. So I made a few more parangs, and eventually I made these two. I made this one first, and this one's got a notch, um, but that, instead of just being a flat um, you know, however thick that is, uh, 3 sixteenths or whatever piece of metal, I actually hammered it and flattened it out so that your finger has something to purchase onto there. And this is a good prang. And then I made this one that's the same. These are the latest two that I've made. Uh, and I really, really, really like the handle on this. It's five inches long and it kind of flares out towards the back. And then you can choke up. And these two prangs, um, are what I use to purchase my coal forge with. What I'm going to do today is take a known piece of steel, this, which is uh, a scrap piece of steel I had sitting around. It's a 1075 that's a quarter inch thick and two inches tall. And I'm going to try to incorporate all of the things that I've learned from making lawnmower blade parangs into it. I've drawn out a rough handle here, so I'm just going to go ahead and grind out that handle. What I'm doing here is forging in a rough bevel. I do that for three main reasons. First, forging makes the blade taller than the original two inch tall bar of steel. Second, forging puts a curve in the blade that is crucial to slicing and chopping tasks. Third, by partially forging in the bevels, it means that I have to remove less metal during the grinding step. Here I am forging in the choke up point. It is possible to do this with the stock removal method, but you would have to start with a thicker piece of steel and burn a lot of belts in the process. I like a gentle downward curve on the handle for my choppers. I start the grinding by establishing the plunge lines. I then start grinding the blade shape. I made this an almost full height convex blade. Because grinding on a wheel will leave you with convex grind marks, I rock the blade slightly to work out most of those marks. Grinding on the slack belt removes the rest. This is the step where I establish the balance of the blade by grinding the tip shape. I shoot for a balance point three finger widths in front of the plunge line before the handle is placed. I take out the rest of the tool marks using a scotch belt. I make the sharpening notch with a Dremel tool. Next I drill holes for the pins. The handle scales are drilled next using the handle as a guide. The blade is then quenched according to the magic protocol. I temper the blade twice for one hour each in a 400 degree oven, cooling to room temperature in between. No matter how careful I am, I usually end up with a slight bend somewhere on the blade or on the handle. 
Keeping the blade edge cool with a wet washcloth, I heat the spine with a blowtorch and then bend in a vise. The gluing step is one of the most hectic. If there is any bend in the handle, I use a two-part epoxy. Here I used Loctite 324 and the 1075 activator. The handle is then clamped overnight. I prefer bright handle materials for my wilderness knife handles. The handle is then very carefully ground to shape. I then buff the handle. Even unsharpened with a dime thick edge, the geometry of the edge and blade and the balance is good enough to easily sink into a stump. I then establish the final edge geometry using a 120 grit belt followed by a 220 grit belt. I am careful to dip the blade in water often to keep it cool. The sharpening is done by establishing a burr with a buffing wheel. The key points I've learned from starting with lawnmower blades are the right balance, handle shape, curved blade shape, full convex grind, and the choke up area that is forged. I've also refined the steps in actually making the blade. While mower blades are not the ideal steel for blade making, they did let me start relatively inexpensively and to make mistakes without ex significant expense. So that's it, the completed product. Uh, shaving sharp, although it really doesn't need to be. Um, and uh, just a fine little parang. It's got great balance. Um, balance point is right at the plunge line, which is about where I like it. Um, should perform well. You'll see it in some videos. Thanks for watching.